open. Welcome everyone to Nonproductive's watch party of Star Trek the original series. Let me bring my wonderful cast out right away because woo. I'm joined by uh, Ken, Katie, and James once again, this time for the pilot episode of Star Trek, the original series. This is a watch party on, if you're watching this through like a podcast or on YouTube or whatever, this is originally aired on Twitch, on Nonproductive's Twitch channel. So go to twitch.tv forward slash nonproductive to follow us. That way you get to watch the episode along with us instead of just watching us in the past through on-demand media. I don't know why I struggled. I was like, like, I think give me invent a word for this. <laughs> Can I just say we didn't bring it up a lot last time when we did the uh, super secret, not really secret, but like the barely aired uh, pilot, the the cage, uh, the intro that Ken warned us about of uh, Gene Roddenberry talking about Star Trek was amazing. He had some masterful leans throughout that. <laughs> I really enjoyed his leans. Uh, Katie had something interesting to say about that while we were watching it. Katie, would you like to repeat? I don't remember what I said. You said, give him a break. He's old. <laughs> That's not interesting to say. He's allowed. He was allowed to lean as much as he wanted, but he it was lean. really exciting to get to see that. I'd never seen that intro before. Uh, it, it's, it's very, um, I guess, what was that? Probably the 80s, right? That yeah. was probably made in the 80s. Yeah, it was very VCR 80s. It, it, it was interesting. So again, welcome everyone to this. What basically this is, is we're, um, we're live on Twitch right now. And we are going to start watching an episode of Star Trek, the original series, the remastered version. Uh, this is going to be the pilot, the actual pilot with Shatner and everything. Full Shatner in this episode. And you get to watch along with us if you're watching this on Twitch. If not... Uh, you can find the episode online if you're on Amazon or, I guess, a different service eventually. But um, just a couple of points to bring up. Uh, you, you need to have an Amazon Prime account all set up on our website, non-productive.com. We give you instructions on how to do it. You probably don't want to do it today if you haven't already. But if you're really quick, use this opportunity to quickly set up Prime and your Twitch account so that you can watch this free, free, delicious content. Um, all right, hosts. Last week, we talked a little bit about how we got into Star Trek and then immediately watched something that most of us had never seen before. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the original cast, the uh, the the OG Star Trek people. Uh, this is Shatner. This, oh, so we have Letter Nimoy here. We have William Shatner. We the have... Mark Kelly. Uh, yes. And... Um, the K is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who amongst the original cast was your, your favorite? And uh, why? I'm going to make you pick favorites right now. Well, let me ask. Uh, our favorite when we were young and were first introduced, or who did we grow into appreciating more? That's a good oh. question. Okay. That's you can answer how I want to answer ways. it. You can answer both ways. Because I grew up loving Spock, and I still do to this day. Yeah. But absolutely. as I got older, I always had an incredible appreciation for Bones. Yes. Good answer. Very, very good answer. Uh, I, I, I actually grew up loving Spock and then grew to be more appreciative of Leonard Nimoy, if that makes sense. You know, like seeing, like there was a very, there was a definitive time in my life where I would watch the, um, the Bilbo Baggins song on, I guess, proto YouTube over or quick time, quick time media player, real time media player. Now over and over. Head, and it's never getting out. <laughs> yeah. We watch it over and over again. Be like, Oh God. And, uh, but now like, like looking into his philosophy and his, his, uh, what he brought to this, you know, small television production, uh, it, it means a lot. And I, I, I very much value it. How about you, James or Katie? You guys can fight over who gets to go first. You can go. Oh, all right. Um, I think growing up as a kid, it was it was Shatner, right? Like the captain, you know, the cool guy. That's who I wanted to be. Um, you know, as I got older, uh, I, I think not so much the characters, but my appreciation for both Leonard Nimoy and George Takei increased which then made me more interested in their roles again in Star Trek, just because of the people they were and, you know, how active they were in the, the fan communities and online and, you know, on a bunch of different stuff. And then, you know, I always heard Chatner was kind of a jerk to work with at cons. So. So even, even young James was like, you know, one day I don't want to work with this guy. 
Uh, yeah. I'm I'm pretty excited about this. Honestly, I can't recall if, uh, and this is going to happen every time we do one of these original series episodes, I can't recall if I've ever seen it, uh, this particular episode. Uh, the man trap sounds Do I ridiculous. get to answer the question? <laughs> I'm not editing this uh, because it's live, but I uh, I apologize. <laughs> I just, if if it's any consolation, there is a camera in front of where I see <laughs> all of you, so it's like it's, you're just kind of a blur of shapes. You, you, you know, last week, Frank, you had, yeah. uh, talked yeah. about who you had met first and how you met each other. Yes. Now we know who you like more. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I had to be perfectly honest, you two guys would not want the answer to that. Katie, my favorite, please go. I'm so sorry. Um, when I was a kid, I was all about Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> I Jamie thought, Duhan, yeah, all right. I he was just hilarious. Um, yeah. but then I definitely grew. Now I, it's all about McCoy. Just, I think as a little kid, I didn't understand like his wit and humor, but now like that's like my sweet spot. So it's definitely great to see him. What a fabulous, nuanced. <laughs> mature, exciting, developed answer. And I feel so, so bad. What was I saying about um the original series and not knowing things? You, know, saying, you um, didn't, yeah, didn't I don't remember if you'd seen it. this episode. Yeah, so the man trap sounds ridiculous. It sounds like a it sounds like something like a like the babysitter and Tom and Jerry would say, a man trap. I don't know where that reference that's not even that's not something I think is gonna be that's not gonna be useful to anybody. All right, but yeah, I don't know what this episode's about. Does any uh, is it clear to any of you? Do you are you very familiar with this? Like immediately, like oh, I know this one. It's a classic. Yeah, I I, I remember the basic premise, but I don't remember a lot of the nuances to it. Like I I remember um, particular characters and what was going on, but I don't remember like overall everything. All right. Well, I'm excited to watch it with everyone. Uh, please join us in the chat. Uh, as we said in our last episode, this isn't a MST3K kind of scenario where we're going to be commenting throughout. Uh, we're, in fact, probably just going to just go to uh, our loading screen while we watch the episode together. Uh, a, there may be some trivia up there, though. Depends on whether we could get that going in time. But uh, enjoy the man trap, the actual pilot for Star Trek, the original series once known as Star Trek. I'm sorry. I'm just very surprised I have not I've yet to call it Star Wars. I really <laughs> did expect that to happen at least 10 times already. So, yay, still Amy. Time. Yeah, there is there's plenty of episodes left. All right, we're going to come back in a few minutes. Well, we're going to not come back in a few minutes. We're going to be watching the whole thing and then we're going to come back with our uh, thoughts about the episode. So, stay tuned. All right, we are back. Uh, that was interesting. The man trap. Might I say, no red shirts were killed in the making of this episode, only mustard and blue. Oh, interesting. Yes, I was looking at the color of the shirts going, is this what it happens? And it wasn't. No, yeah, interesting. Uh, but lots I, of people died. James? I, I liked it. I definitely like can feel the notes from Gene Roddenberry's talk in the 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 last one we watched. You know, make it a little less smart. Don't make it, you know, make it a little more obvious. Not that it was bad, you know, but it's just like like Kirk in the beginning, like having to explain, little did we know we were all seeing a different version of the same woman. And I'm like, I feel like, shouldn't we get that? I'm like, we, they- We piece that together, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, there was definitely a little bit of dumbing down. Katie, do you have anything to say? I'm excited <laughs> about how not awkward it seemed between the characters. Where usually that pilot episode, you get a lot of, I don't know, just weirdness because they don't know each other. It seemed natural. They're all their intros. I was like, I don't know if it's because of my nostalgia, but I'm like, 
Oh, no one seems super weird. Like, I believed McCoy and Kirk had been, you know, they were buddies. Well, th- that's actually where I, I kind of found th- this first episode weird because it opens up with Kirk giving his log saying that him and McCoy are going to a planet and the f- we're not introduced to these guys at all. Yet, in the first thing that we're told is that his acting officer, Spock, is in the captain's chair. I was actually kind of weirded out that for the first episode, we didn't have Kirk in the captain chair and having those relationships the way we probably should get him for a pilot. So, so I think you're both right, just really quickly, because in my notes, and forgive my handwriting, weird is the first word I put it in. It's what we just used. But I think you're talking about two different kinds of weird. On the one hand, all these characters are very close to the characters, these iconic characters we know now, right? Uh, Which is amazing, and to Katie's point. But on the other hand, the things that are not quite all the way there yet, are they're still trying out, like the very fact that the red shirts aren't the ones who are dying in the way, uh, those things do feel a little odd. Uh, Or the fact that Spock is in the captain chair for whatever reason, and it's interesting. It's it's even though I'm not super familiar with the original series, just them not doing everything exactly the way I expected them to be felt odd to me. Uh, James, so, you were saying something, yeah. Well, so there's an interesting reason why you think these things, um, and this is actually a piece of trivia I picked up last week after researching um, the cage. So the man trap is the third episode of Star Trek they oh. filmed. Uh, I believe where no man has gone before was originally intended as the pilot. I don't know why they aired them out of order. I couldn't find that piece of information, but I mean, uh, Katie and I both commented that we liked that. They kind of just went right into it and they're like space people, you you know, (laughs) like, I don't know. (laughs) So I wonder how many times we're going to do the pilot of star Trek on which show. (laughs) Three times, theoretically. All right, I guess three times is the max we can do. Uh, oh, oh, that's that's actually pretty interesting and a good idea, a good way to get people all. If you had the budget, definitely do a couple episodes where like, you throw them away and be like, all right, no one really knew who these characters were yet. Well, and, and I think that, I think that was part of the thing that I, I found weird about it was because it's in a duck. This one scene with uh, Uhura and Spock, I got a lot of talk about. But uh, it opens up with them explaining, like her, te- uh, pretty much explaining to Spock that her and Kirk, I mean, him and Kirk are best friends, or, yeah. or Kirk's the closest uh, friend that Spock has. And I just thought it was so weird for like a first episode that that's how we're introduced to their relationship. And I'm also kind of struck weird that Uhura was trying to mac on Spock during that scene. I was so excited. So for two reasons, like I said, I'm I exist in a weird time frame for uh, Star Trek, uh, and I, in my forefront of my memory, is the Abrams Star Trek movies. They're just they happen more recently. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they were almost, I'm like, that's canon. They based that on a thing. That's awesome. I was very excited about that thing, uh, about the the macking. Uh, and also, I, it's a Robot Devil reference, which I always love. A Robot Devil, uh, devil uh, from Futurama where you have your characters say what their emotions are. <laughs> Just like exposition. Like, you know how you, Kirk, and uh, you, Spock, are best friends? Yes, I do know that. Thank you for elaborating. Thank, thank you for speaking to me the way no humans ever speak to each other, ever. Uh, James and Katie, you're married, uh, as you know. Uh, <laughs> can you Some- tell me what your feelings are about this? Sometimes it's better if we speak about our feel- no I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, I I loved it. I, look, I think you know you, you just, I just like getting right into it and also like I think it's kind of interesting. I don't know, it shapes my opinion of Spock here, right? To think that maybe as an alien he just doesn't think about relationships like that and who is like you guys are like best friends. You know, like, don't you have that word on your planet sort of deal? I I liked it. I thought it was interesting. It colors, you know, all that. And it's also of the time. I mean, if you're going to make a 60s sci-fi show, I think having characters spell out how they feel is pretty interesting. Uh, But all right. I do have some notes. Let's let's maybe go through our notes and see Uh, Nancy Carter, Crater, 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 Nancy Crater. That one woman we all have in our past. And I was like, you're going hard on the 
the awkward 60ness of this right away, aren't you, Star Trek? You son of a bitch. It really is um, hard to see this being made any other time than the period it came from. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, 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 and then they 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 just sort of name dropped Wrigley's Pleasure Planet. I didn't make that up, right? They said that Rig Wrigley's Pleasure Planet. That's where one of the guys who gets killed on on planet side could have sworn he saw the woman from. Yeah. That reminds me of a girl I met from Wrigley's Pleasure Planet, and I'm like, what are you saying? What are you suggesting? Here, what is what are you saying to your boss about I, his ex girlfriend? They were definitely right to be offended. I, and honestly, that's, I don't. I was looking at that. I was like, this, "I'm sorry, go on, that's Katie." What yes, viewers want to know about the future. It really is. It goes down to the whole Firefly thing, where like when Firefly was on the air, everybody would tell me about the. Let me explain to you what these. Uh, what the hell were they called? The. Um, Companions, right? Companions? Oh, yeah. They're, yeah. They're yeah. Everybody was super, like, it was. I thought the show was 90% about companions uh, because everybody was really into it. So I wonder if, like, it, when Star Trek first came out, people were like, no, trust me, we're going to eventually get to Rickley's Pleasure Planet and it's going to be epic. It's weird. It was just, there was a lot of awkwardness. I feel like I focused too much effort on, on that one part, but it is. Um, I think my overall feelings about this episode was I was surprised how much Star Trek felt like an episode of the Twilight Zone. Does that does that make sense to anybody? There's a I mean, there's again a lot, a lot of them are. Yeah, there is a lot of like this is a weird version of reality or the future. Um, specifically, there's the that the sense of the the '60s serialness of it. Uh, the horror aspects of getting reports of people dying planet side and the mystery around it. And especially the fact that in this episode, we got something that uh, apparently was referred to as a salt vampire by, uh, by writers afterwards, which I kind of love. Um, but yeah, I, I was shocked. I'm surprised that so much is a lot of star Trek, the original series horror like, uh, not a like, chunk, a chunk of it to a degree. I wouldn't say horror. More like, I mean, that's sci-fi. Black Mirror. It's all foreboding. It's warning us. It's got to be a little scary. I yeah, I suppose so. I I, I got the impression that Star Trek was, and it is. This is an optimistic view of the future. Uh, but at the same time, I guess hand in hand with the optimistic is the pessimistic. Uh, which is the you know the warnings about what would happen to a world like when you're the last of your kind, and uh, I think that was uh, pretty powerful. I, I don't want to leap to the end of it, and if anybody has anything else to say, please chime in at this point. But uh, the 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 overall point of the story I think ends pretty interestingly. I feel like we need to. It's is it two sixties to address the fact that the only other black man who runs into when the thing changes speaks Swahili? No, that's not your pro. That's not the problem. What's the problem? Keeping that info from her head. My problem yeah. is she's on the spaceship in the middle of the galaxy, and she doesn't know this fine-looking man on her ship that also is fluent in Swahili. How hey, do you not know who he was? There are hundreds, maybe thousands of people on that ship. You have is no that, idea. You've not, if you're you've on the, not you're determined on the that. Is that established? Well, I know we know that in uh, Next Generation. I think there's like there's thousands, many, many yeah. hundreds according, of people. But... According to Pike in the original <laughs> thing, Pike does the count. Said, he said, "I'm very stressed manning this ship with 206 lives." <laughs> I'm like, that's it. <laughs> Some of which were walking God. down the right. hall in bathing suits. So, according as to I have been waiting to do this for uh, pretty much the two episodes we've done so far. Uh, Katie, you're now the new host of the show. <laughs> it's all you now, Katie. No, no. no if if Katie is going to be the host, when we have to talk, I have to call her out. Oh, all right. What what what's happening? What are you calling her out on? Or are so, you just wor worried about the future? Yeah. No, no. She must have not been paying attention. So we make it to the boardroom scene. Oh no. When, I when, was a little sleepy. 
<laughs> when Bones and everyone are talking and um, uh, Crater and Bones look at each other and Katie goes, oh no, she's Bones, isn't she? I started shouting at the TV, it's the salt lady, that's her. And James is like, we know that. <laughs> so you had your own little horror movie going on because you I were was, it, not paying it I was so excited I figured out this great mystery and apparently that was great. They told That's us. That's awesome. So I basically Roddenberry's notes were 100% accurate. The studio's notes to him were like, dumb it down. <laughs> dumb this down. Do you know what's happening? Even in 2020, people will need help. As long as we're discussing the fact that <laughs> The creature was on the ship. My question was, how did the creature get on the ship? Are yeah. the transporter engineers that incompetent that they couldn't tell that it was a different bio pattern coming in? I they wonder didn't. if uh, we don't. How much do we know about bio patterns at this point in Star Trek? Like, are they up. that super complicated? Right. It's just maybe three life forms standing next to each other, and it's we, it's like a complex organism. At that point, and I'm not sure if this was ever accurate, I used to think when I was young that the, the that your device was what they used to find you and transport you. And I I just I was actually watching this thinking, when is she gonna pick up when is the monster transporter or something? Pick up the the, uh, the yeah. comps. Well, that that was more of a next gen thing where it was the communicator that was attached to you. They didn't have those in the yeah. old show. But they, yeah. they would beam up people who weren't, you know fleet members before like this isn't the only instance of it the answer is this is one of those questions that the original cast got asked all the time in the 70s and 80s and 90s until eventually they became the kind of person that james doesn't want to work with <laughs> in the convention circuit so there is no real answer because they probably were still working it out uh, uh, along the way but i guess the um this alien uh which we're i guess i'm calling the salt vampire becomes uh is so good at uh deceiving Mimicking, we should have kept yeah. it alive so that we could study it here's a quick thing i keep referring to it as a salt vampire it's never brought that it's never mentioned that way in this on screen the reason why is while we were watching i was playing around with the screen uh amazon prime videos x-ray feature is amazing when you put your mouse and i may have mentioned it last week i can't remember not you you did what are they paying you I, they are making this possible. So basically, if you put your mouse over the screen, it gives you factoids over there, and you get little trivia bits like uh, the fact that some guy called it the salt monster. You have to watch it again and find out that thing. Uh, yes, it's it was really it was interesting. My one of my favorite things before. So we're not talking about the finale yet. Was the hand puppets for the plants? <laughs> yes, I was gonna say how awesome was Stulu's puppet plant? I right, love that. It was so good. It was so good because like it was almost like a good special effect. It wasn't bad, but the the puppeteer who was doing it at one point or other was like, I'm gonna hold my hand like an ant. <laughs> he could have just like I hit a finger or two or just made it a little bit weirder, but he was like, No, nah, it's gonna be a hand. <laughs> I'm cramping. <laughs> and then he, well, I don't know how I feel too. I, I don't know how I felt about uh, the puppeteer when uh Sulu was stroking the plant later on too. stroking it Shh, yeah. it's okay it's well, okay like that stressed. plant can't hear you get it i felt bad for the stressed plant i yeah. liked i liked katie as the salt vampire was walking around the ship screaming at it going just go to the mess hall there's plenty of other salts you don't need to follow that I lady even, i don't even know do they have replicators back then just eat some salt she could live on that ship forever <laughs> They are inconsistent about many things, including how intelligent this creature is, because it seems as if it, it is fully intelligent and can reason and debate and what have you. But maybe that's just an illusion. Maybe all of this is like a part of the mind reading where it could absorb that. Yeah, it's it's figuring out what you want to hear from it. So it's if it makes an emotional plea to you, it's just hijacking your memories and, mm. and playing with it. Uh, mm as opposed to being actually, you know, fully sentient and able to reason that, hey, these people don't seem to have a problem with salt. Maybe I should just order a salty meal, get some yeah. uh, no noodles up here and eat that. Uh, it, it's it's interesting. Do we want to talk about the buffalo, for lack uh, of a better term? Since, since we're waiting, let's, let, let, let me just make sure that I get everything out before we land on the buffalo. Uh, one other thing, I, I did two other things I wanted to bring up. 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Four other things. Oh One, my God. The great bird. Uh, uh, may the great bird of the galaxy. What was that? What did he? What did Sulu say? He ref he said something was the great bird of the galaxy send you on your way or whatever. It was some generic phrase when he walked when when yeah when when we were in the puppet room uh, and according to X Ray yes that's right I get a penny every time I say it uh, that was Gene Roddenberry's nickname was the Wait. great bird of the galaxy that's interesting this is what's happening people who aren't Star Trek fans right now in the chat are going like that's weird. And giving me the looks that you folks are giving me. And the people who are Star Trek fans are already flagging this video. Saying, how dare you do a Star Trek rewatch and not know Gene Roddenberry's nickname. All right. The phased speech. Remember when uh, the scientist gets phased and then you were slurring? What the hell was that? He had a very specific slur. Watch it again. It, it it's something that they don't stick with, but apparently, if you're phased and and you're in, if you're stunned, you shroom like this, like you yeah. slow down. For I a also second. I was like, did they do this in the future? Because I was confused. Because he even explains it. He goes, you know, you'll be able to be you know normal in a few minutes. In a minute, your whole muscles, your synapses, everything slowed like, down. Do they do that every time they phase somebody? There's no <laughs> way. I don't think so. I think it's the one and only time it ever come out as the first. It's time actually. It's actually a cool idea with an interesting explanation. I think it's just a cut for time, right? Yeah. They can't you, phase somebody and then have to go through a few minutes of, you know, and phase. Buddy. Yeah, mm. it's got to cost something to do that, right? To the slow time, down. Each. Actors time. Yeah. Just and they're slow like. Slow down editing. Nobody cares about this. Let's just not. Who, who's going to do a, a live streaming show in like 100 years talking about this? Uh, all right, sleeping pills. Would you take sleeping pills from an ex girlfriend? <laughs> no. no, but they weren't from her. They were. Yeah, Bones had them first. I like, think so. He but, said like, his... Kirk wanted him to take them. All right, but his ex girlfriend did walk in mysteriously. Like, just trust me, I'm I'm on the ship for some reason, and I'm being hunted. But also, why don't you relax and take some of these pills? And Bones was just like, Yeah, I guess I will. You're my Bones... room. Bones was gaga from her from the very beginning of the episode. She could have said anything and he would have been fine with it. That's my point. She could have said something that was a little bit more dramatic. Maybe they were running out of time in the, in the episode. And it feels like it was a little late. But if she like implored him on the relationship they had, but instead we were just told, well, we, you know how we love each other? Yeah. Well, I'm being hunted. Why don't you just relax and take some of these pills? I mean, there's a leap there. There was a there was a step missing between also, how there's an adrenaline thing. He thought that she was just in trouble and could have died. So it's just like this moment of relief. He's probably just happy she's there. So naturally, you take some sleeping pills to be like, oh, he was I'm glad that changed about the sleeping pills. <laughs> hmm. I think there's some other uh, subtext here from the 60s and 70s that we're choosing not to see, which is probably for the best. Uh, and uh, my last uh, note, really, before we could get into the Buffalo, is that final fight was very odd. It was a very weird, like, a, <clears throat> though, if I had to say what an iconic Star Trek fight was, it would be a lot of, like, freeze framing and, like, and angrily posing and then punching like this. Yeah, I was going to say, so we're talking about this. I mean, the, but all, all those Spock things fight. happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spock yes. was just so horrified that Bones wasn't doing anything. It's like, you a logical creature, bam, bam. <laughs> if Spock found out that Bones willingly uh, took roofies, he was like, oh, all right. So you're in my, my deck, and I don't know why you're even you know off planet, but hey, let's have a pill party like the old days. They trust I that guy to save their lives. He's the doctor. <laughs> It, it, it's like that double axe hand move like taught in Starfleet because it seems like it comes up a lot. Like I don't understand what the principle of that is. In the new animated show, and there, there's a new animated show we've been talking about it on our fan club on Facebook, uh, I, I hope they have a long, a protracted sequence where they explain where this move comes from, the double-handed. <laughs> they do it in next gen too. Yeah, it is a thing. It is definitely a future <laughs> martial art that we have not yet discovered, really. It's exciting. All right, speaking of exciting, let's talk about the thing we've been teasing for the last couple of minutes, uh, the buffalo. 
this thing is as rare as the buffalo uh, and as extinct as the buffalo. This salt vampire is apparently the last of its kind. As far as we know, it has fantastic powers. Uh, it is seemingly sentient or else really good at faking sentience by uh, mimicking and playing with your emotions and your memories. Uh, were, did they do the right thing in killing it? Put aside slightly that they may have had to do it at the moment. It feels like they probably didn't. That they had enough uh, equipment and skills and stun lasers to to do her. her. Yeah, they, they have a transporter and a brig. Just yeah. send it to the brig. Yeah, I'm gonna say no too, mostly because Crater was living with this a year, two years. Right, unless his mind is somehow manipulated into thinking the time is longer, it means that the the thing like not only is sentient but can re chill. Right? Yeah. Like like assumably like, you know yeah, I, I just can't imagine, you know, and she chose to eat the other people first before him, right? You right. know, and then it's just, when she got on the ship. It's kind of like her, she just went on a feeding frenzy, like her. It's almost as if she was hunger the entire time and had yeah. no control. Yeah. My, uh, Katie, what, you, what about you? Now I'm starting to feel bad. You were originally pro uh, killing the yeah, well, in the part. middle of it, I was like, save your friend, <laughs> kill her. But now I'm kind of like, that poor lady. I also had a problem with. I don't know how much of what he was saying is the truth, but when he says the jar of salt pills, he's like, this used to be full. In two years, she had half a jar of salt pills. I think you could have kept her alive for a little bit longer. <laughs> Seems like it. Ken, you were saying something? You're gonna My uh, only concern was, who's the one who pulled the trigger? It was the one man who took an oath to preserve life. Hmm. You know, and that's one of the things that was a big thing for Bones. Like he was constantly saying, like that that's not what he does, and that's ultimately what he does in the first episode. Yeah. Although it does possibly make some fan fiction right there of why he won't do it in later episodes, because he feels like he killed his love, uh, even if it wasn't real. That would be interesting. Um yeah, I think it's a complicated question, and that Star Trek doesn't really give us a. This episode certainly doesn't give us a good answer for it, um, which is fun. That's actually part of why speculative fiction is interesting. It allows us to question things like whether or not we should be doing a thing. I think in the comfort of 2020, we can look back and uh, comfort of 2020. That sentence has never been said. <laughs> oh, let's just end this program. God, no. Uh, well, so things, I'm saying real quick. Speaking of endings, too. Yeah. I don't know if uh, anybody was able to catch the uh, the end credits on this episode. No, Every no, still no. shot is from the cage. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's so, all. That's great. But uh, what I, I was saying was that in the comfort of now not being killed by a salt vampire, better way of phrasing it, I guess. Um, you can we can look at uh, we can look at someone experiencing danger and saying, "Oh, well, you should not have." use lethal force because you could have made it out the other side and everything would have been okay. But who knows? Who knows what would have been if a Bones let the soul vampire kill uh, his buddy. And I, I like that we end on Kirk still thinking about it, that he is thinking about it, even though he was almost murdered by it. It's still... Because we kind of... I feel like we think back of him as just an oaf. Yeah. But he's, he's the captain and he, he obviously... We not. think of him as Zach Brannigan to do yeah. for Charlie it again, but, but he's, 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 he's a little bit more than that. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know if Ken or James had to go next. Uh, James, you were about to Ken say can something. go. Ken can go. I just wanted to, I found the information I was looking for on the oh, broadcast okay. order. So maybe something interesting we can end on. All right, I'll, Ken. My, mine's real quick. Mine's, uh, you know, Kirk and them could have just beamed the, the beast to another planet where it could have lived out its life normally because that never came back to haunt them later on. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely. I, I think. I think this show kind of. My no, guess okay. is that this. No, I. I'm playing off of it. I think that. Oh wait, was that a reference to something that I'm not? Yeah. Miss, I'm missing. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were being honest that it didn't haunt. No, nope. oh. Kirk took uh, Khan and his people and transferred them it, to another planet to live their lives alone. Got yeah. Got it. It's now a bad I, idea. I picked it up. Good one. 
good one. Uh, I, to finish my thought that stepped on yours was the, um, I do feel like this was, you know, Star Trek at this time is, and actually always, almost always will be. There's a lot of continuity. Everyone talks about Star Trek lore and everybody and how it all connects. And when it, we say Pike doesn't count, but he, even though he wasn't in the unaired pilot, he becomes part of the canon. Um, but another side of it is there is a lot, it's a, it's a very much an anthology show where episodically things may not necessarily come back la later on mm -hmm. in a direct way. Uh, but then again, Ken's comment about it never, yeah, it's true. You never know what we could talk. We could tell them we could scream with the screen, leave the cell vampire alone, but who knows how many uh, monsters <laughs> could be played by Ricardo Montalban and come back and haunt them in epic movies. Uh, James, you have something about the viewing order. So yes, so uh, I looked up and apparently this was the sixth episode produced of Star Trek uh, mm -hmm. and the first one to come in on time and on budget. Um, they can, NBC saw the first six episodes and ha had to decide which one they wanted to use as a pilot. The intended pilot was where no man has gone before. NBC also considered Mud's woman the man trap and the naked time as all of the potential pilot episodes, but ultimately would go with this one. So that's mm -hmm. four uh, with the cages five. So we have potentially five pilots <laughs> to get through. All right. That's, that's going to do it for us on the only pilots <laughs> <laughs> party thing we've ever done thank you uh, all for uh, joining us hey look something weird is going to flash by the screen we haven't updated this in a while there's a few more names to add to the list oh thank you to our patrons who made this possible we should also add our the people who um who subscribe to us on twitch you could do that uh if you have amazon prime linked up to your twitch account you have a free subscription won't cost you a penny and will make us feel good inside uh, I believe Bill is a new backer that has not been added to this thing yet. Uh, I don't know Bill. yet. We'll, we'll update it. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your support. Uh, I hope you're enjoying watching Star Trek with some geeks and chatting along with us. Uh, we do enjoy talking with you as well. And stay tuned um, for our next episode, which is yet another pilot of Star Trek, the original series, only on our Twitch channel. And we're going to on Prime and maybe eventually CBS Whole Access. Good night, everybody. Good night. And it's always looking for that sub button. <laughs>